For more than a week in October 2020, peaceful protesters were on the streets of major cities across Nigeria, demanding justice for victims of police brutality, the dissolution of the special anti robbery squad known as SAS, and the reform of the police force. On October the 20th, these protesters at the Lekito Plaza, a key rallying point for demonstrations, refused to leave. Basically, that day, that was on the 20th, um, at about noon, say for say 12 to 12, in the afternoon, we got an information that was, there was going to be coffee, and that coffee will be starting at um, 4 p.m., but we were still um, present at the topic. And the question was, are uh, our demands be met, our five demands, have they been met before in, in imposing coffee on us? And we were still debating on that. There yeah, are people were still protesting and saying they were going nowhere, knowing fully well that some people didn't even come from Lagos, some people came from outside Lagos. And yeah, roads are blocked. There was uh, practically no movement. We're still debating and people insisting that until the government attend to our need, we got another information at about 2 p.m. or thereabouts. I really can't place my hands on the correct timing right now. That the coffee has been moved to, I think, 9 p.m. I mean, yeah, 9 p.m. And yeah, we started celebrating like, okay, it's also an advantage for us to keep hearing and then if anybody was um, preparing to go to their home, that was an ample time. So, but while we were doing that, uh, later in the afternoon, we started hearing gunshots. What started out as a peaceful practice for better governance and a better Nigeria turned bloody that night. People falling down with gunshot wounds. There was an old man with a native, all stained with blood. There was a guy beside me wearing a white shirt. He was not breathing. He was just there. There was no gun, sh uh, gun, gun uh, wound on him, but he was just lifeless. There were a few other people who were shot, and they were being carried um, from where they were to where we were all gathered. There was a lady that was shot on uh, a waist, I don't know if she's still alive, I'm still trying to find out. There was a guy that was shot in his hat and we were able to hold them still because they brought them from where they were shot at the, the toll gate because we we're in the corner, so they brought, we were the FCC um, center, so they brought them from there to here. So we're trying to put down the, the, um, the bullets, we're trying to hold it down and we had to put pressure so it doesn't, you know, affect them. So we took them to the hospital. One of the protesters, Obiano Jode, also known as DJ Switch, streamed the shooting to more than 100,000 people on Instagram Live. Nigerians watched as people tried to remove a bullet from the tie of a protester as another took his last breath. Before her battery died and the live stream ended, DJ Switch said, they were surrounded by soldiers who blocked exit points. Later in the evening, a, a, I think a more senior um, military officer came in um, to kind of um, douse the tension. And then he was trying to address us. And um, you know, the protesters were like, this should have been the first thing, not shooting at us randomly without even, you know, engaging in any conversation. And so it, 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 it kind of was trying to, you know, ask us to calm down and people were not ready to listen because at that point people were already injured, some people were already dead. And I summoned up courage to raise my hands and I walked um, in the direction to ask him, sir, can we get ambulance for these people that are already down? And I said, where, where do we have ambulance? I told him somewhere around, I know we used to have ambulance, you know, packed around. And then he said, okay, go get ambulance. And I said to him, look, I'm not going to go because even the armies were saying, everybody go home, go home. And then as people were running to go to their homes, they were shooting at them. I said, so I wasn't going until you give me someone to cover me to get to that point where I can at least reach out for help to get ambulance. And which he granted, gave me one of his orderlies, I guess. 
to walk me out because there were other hammies at the end tail and and it was at the back of the night they could do anything. So I was able to get out and I met some guys uh, that I approached that called for ambulance and on getting the ambulance to that point where we had other armies um, barricading the road, they didn't allow for access um, at that point. When the ambulance came around, they weren't allowed to help. They told them to go back. We couldn't um, really take people that were shot, we couldn't really take them out because we have been surrounded. So um, there were some ambulances that came for a rescue, but the soldiers said no, and the soldiers had to take them away by themselves with their own vans and all that. The extent of the casualty is still disputed, but no fewer than 15 persons are believed to have been killed. Efforts to reach the Nigerian army spokesperson proved abortive, as the military said it won't speak since the Lagos State panel investigating the matter was still sitting. The Lekki Toll Plaza was set ablaze following the shooting and no fee has been collected there since October the 20th, 2020. And some of the protesters wanted to remain that way and have insisted on the place being turned into a memorial venue for the killings that took place. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa.